welcome to the Candle Business Coach Podcast, a show about the craft of candle making and small business. I'm your host, Kirsty Allen, and I'm a candle maker, mum of three, and kindness advocator. Join me as I dive into all things candles and small business and deliver advice and tips to you in episodes every Tuesday and Friday. Are you on the list to get my daily motivation emails? Every day I'll send you a message that is designed to help keep you focused on taking action toward your goals. Sign up using the link in the show notes. This episode is brought to you by my free ebook, The Candle Business Marketing Kickstarter Kit. Inside this free ebook, you'll learn to identify your blocks of time to dedicate to your candle business. Plus, there are several tips and tricks for re engaging past customers and attracting new customers into your business so you can grow your business and reach your goals. Check out the link in the show notes for your copy. Welcome back to the podcast, my friend. Today we have a very, very lovely guest with us, joining us all the way from America, which I love. We have Ashley from Novel Design. Ashley, would you like to say hello to the listeners and tell us about your story? Hi, listeners. I hope you love Kirstie as much as I do, and I know you do. I am 35, living in New Orleans, Louisiana, obviously. No, we're not all Mardi Gras and Bourbon Street and all that. But I started my design business after bartending for a little over a decade and seeing all the waste of glass after going back and forth from New York and different other cities. I was like, oh my God, we're not recycling glass here. Flash forward to my passion with design. I'm spending hundreds of dollars on candles. And so Come COVID, I realized, let me make that work and start a recycled glass candle company. And here we are. I love that. I love that you've created something out of a need that not only benefits the planet and your community, but is something that is so important to you as well. And I find that when people, especially candle makers, live in their truth and they're aligned with their values and their morals, that's where they find the most success because they're on the right path for them and it resonates with so many other people as well. Absolutely. I mean, you say it all the time and that's why, I mean, you're an icon to me and in the making and I, I salute you all day. You're just, you're just a gem, girl. You're a gem. Thank you. And it's, I mean, you're like, wow. So I just can't thank you enough and hats off to you, but to address all that is just so important because yes, it's, it's a passion and you say it on the show all the time and other uh, candle makers and any, anybody, even if you're Googling, like, what is your, what's the key to success? It's not about what are you selling? It's not about "Mm, what scents are these? What's the top thing? It's a passion. And so if you're not liking it and you're just doing it because everyone else is doing it, well, that's exactly that. It's not going to work at Mm. at all. Mm -hmm. You'll come up against more challenges and more hurdles, both in your business and in your own mental headspace as well. Because if you're not in alignment with who you are as a person, then everything seems like so much more of a struggle. Exactly. It's, it's something that I almost feel you can't teach. It goes with the, I use a lot of essential oils in my candles. I personally have so much, I've had allergy problems since I was a child and I've never been into like the Glade plugins or the Febreze and all of that. And my mother with the gain and the tide and uh, the snuggle and all this, I was always like breaking, you know, like breaking out and rosacea and uh, the hives. And it's like, oh, grow up. And I was, there just has to be something else. And when I learned about even a uh, shout out to Miss Myers, because that was something, one of the first things I'm on Amazon, I was very avid online shopper beauty.com before it got shut down like way 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 back in the day and I was like there has to be something for my skin that I can do so you know it's it's insane to 
I couldn't use perfumes. It would be gifted to me. Essential oils came into it, but even essential oils can be an agitant or aggravating to the skin if you use it wrong. So, so many girls and guys, you know, out there trying to do candles and spritzes and roll ons and the like, anything, they're just like mixing that too much. The scent, the oil, the fragrance oil is just. If you put too much, you think you're making it better, but you're really um, aggravating in the same way. So that's also something to know. Mm, that's right. And so many candle makers that I speak to are of the belief that if they add more fragrance oil or more essential oils, they'll get a better result and a, a stronger hot throat when really that can clog the wick and cause more issues to mm-hmm. lead to an un- underperforming candle, which um, is not what we're wanting. Nope, it is not. and. That is one of the questions that I get asked all the time. I'm just starting to do these, um, as you could see, the the candle workshops. And everyone thinks, even people that have worked for me or with me, you know, I'm along there. I'm right by their side. I'm trying to, it is science. It's chemistry and, you know, and hopefully everyone would know. It's not just it's like baking, right? So you just, it's very specific and I can cook more Cajun food and all this, but I'm no baker. So it is so, so specific, but it's not that complicated. If you know or care about what you're doing, if you overthink it, it's too dense or it's this, and then they're stressing out about it and it shouldn't be stressful, like you say. So I think that, um, that the clogging of the wick and the they're like, what wick should I use? There's no easy way to say like, yes, this wick and this wax and this oil and this brand, it's just uh, a little bit of TLC and a little more concentrating on like, let's just start with one and like go from there. Yes, definitely. And that testing phase of trying the different wicks and wax and fragrance combinations is so vital for each person to go on that journey, even though someone could tell you this wick and this wax will work together. You are making your candles in a different environment to where someone else is making them. The temperature, the humidity, where you are in the world, that all plays into how candles are created and the results that you'll get. So you have to do your testing and you have to go through that process. 100%. And when anything that you ever hear, it's like, test, test, test. And people, I feel like they respond to that as like, oh, well, I've heard about testing and like, I'm over it. No, like I know on the SAT, we have standardized testing of the fill in the bubble or like, I don't know, punch hole, all these things. It's like, if everyone's saying it, maybe there's a reason for it to be right, perhaps. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but maybe not. I, you can't just go and like, I'm doing this. I bought this kit on Amazon. I'm going to make it today. Smells good. I poured all this on top because when you light that, your customer's um, new eyelashes could <laughs> blow up in flame. I don't know. Like it's, it's hairspray. Think about it that way. And there's, it's a chemical going in something. It doesn't matter if it's toxic or non-toxic. It's still oil, oil and vinegar, or it's oil and water, or it's like oil and just making it flow. So it is chemistry. It is baking and just try it. Try before you buy. If you see something, say something, you know, Mm. like that's the best advice that I think we can give to anybody. And maybe if we could get that point across. And I know that it is expensive also because to get that one kit, right? And you're getting it, it's a soy. Soy wax is a great starter, as everyone could possibly know. And I think that it doesn't matter if you're going with, uh, what's the new thing, apricot, okay, um, coconut, so beeswax, all, all these things can retain a throw, cold and hot. but 
it's the care you put into it. It's the stir, not too much, but you don't have to overthink it. And Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's just important to maybe, you know, dial in on just three cents, concentrate. Yes. So rather than overwhelm yourself and your customers by making 10 or 15 or 20 different types of fragrance options yeah. and in different yeah. sizes and in different colors and in different shapes. <laughs> yes, doing please all that, stop. <laughs> yeah, just take it one step at a time. Start off with the smaller range. And then as you build your customer base and they will be involved in sharing with you what they want to see next, then you can expand your range and have more options for your customers. But it's also so important to know who your customers are, who your niche is and who you're actually speaking to as well. Yes, everyone loves candles, but you won't be selling your candles to every single person out there. You need to know who you're talking to, who's important in your business, and make sure that you're being in alignment across all your different marketing channels. A hundred percent. Again, it's so easy to say, oh, find your niche. Okay. So many of us out there struggle to find our friend groups in high school or am I a nerd? Am I the cool? Am I preppy? Am I this? And we fortunately live in a world where it's like everything's so blended. And then you go to the online market and there's all this pressure. St. Patrick's Day, Mother's Day, 4th of July. Oh, all these things. No, like you just have to hone in and that is great. I'm not going to, I'm obviously not going to diss on a sale or um, a marketing. There's a whole nother level of marketing, especially online. But I think that the thing to focus on would be retail versus online sales. Totally different thing. So if you're doing, for instance, uh, trade shows or farmers markets or you, you know anything like that where people are one thing if I can kind of add a little light to that what I did when I was um, doing my recon a bit I'd go to and I encourage I still do this to this day and because I'm weird I guess go to any uh, I don't know if y'all have like the, the whole foods or fresh market all these bougie quotes, um, markets where you want your price point to be, because that's a, that's a whole thing. And you've covered that too. You have to, you can't price. I see girls doing so many candles, like intricate, um, molds and everything. and, And they don't know how to price themselves price. You need to go do your research. So go to those candle aisles in these shops, go to where you want to be and observe. And where I started was like the laundry aisle because I I'm allergic to a lot of stuff. So it wasn't for me, but I wanted to observe like, okay, so what do they do? The the consumer before they're a customer, before they buy, they they look at it a little bit, they take it, they unscrew the cap or the lid if they can, they give it a sniff, and then they put the lid back on, and they look at it, and then they put it back. So that's your three seconds of fame right there. Like that's everything. And there is the way online is totally different because they're seeing it's your photos and it's your lighting and it's your staging. And there are tips on that too, that I know that you and I could go on for days about, but it's, you're selling. It's just like food when you're ordering on the Uber Eats or the, you know, delivery, like, you're looking at something you eat with your eyes, you're eating with your like your nose, your senses. It's that's what you want. Like you could say on there, lemon, sage, blah, blah, blah. And um, they'll be like, oh yeah, I smell that. Mm-hmm. Not to say like you shouldn't put in there because the ingredients are there, but that's why I don't put anything on there because I like people to, I'm more nostalgia based. So I think that um, that's my niche. And there could be different things, but I think keep it more simple is the best way. And just observing is really cool. Mm, that's so important because as as you say, like when we're selling our products online, our potential customers can't actually smell the candles. So we need to make sure our photos are absolutely beautiful. The descriptions are detailed and 
take the um, the potential customer on a journey so that they can enjoy the process of buying from you rather than it's just a simple transaction. There's so much more involved. And that's why when I have candle makers that ask me, oh, you know, is a website worth it? Do I need to invest in that part of my business? And I say, yes, absolutely, because you can't continue to sell your candles just through DMs or emails or text messages. You need to be able to take the customer on a journey and they need to feel comfortable and confident in what you're presenting to them. Yes, and that is so right. It's it's the journey. It's And that all relates back to, as an interior designer, it's insane to me that there are designers out there trying to sell their vision in a you know, in a world or in a space that is not appropriate. So maybe they have their eye on this specific vessel as a candle maker. Maybe that designer has their eye on a specific piece of art or, you know, a $10,000 console or couch that's like 50 grand. And that's just not, and and the, the client has kids. It's, you got to read the room at the end of the day. And I think that there are complimentary scents for candles, as well as, you know, like what bar stool is going to fit under this, this counter, or it just go, it's just like locking it in like Legos or blocks. Like there's, it's, it could be so simple, but I'm, I'm guilty. I, I've overcomplicated myself. I was fortunate enough to have sat on this candle idea for years while I was planning to do my design business. I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to open my own. I'm not going to work for these contractors anymore. They don't get me, you know, the things we say. And it's true. But as a visionary, um, you just, you need a creative, you need someone to implement, like, I I feel like you and I are yin and yang and I haven't even met you because (laughs) it's just like someone, it's not about someone who's just like, okay, you messed up today. It's going to be okay, honey. It's just like you, it's a respect thing. So respect the room, respect the wax, respect the scent, respect the, the customer or just know walk around a store and say, I know we didn't have that luxury during COVID and all this, but we do now more than ever. I personally was affected like um, everyone else during COVID. And I just found a way to pivot um, because I couldn't do what I love the most, which is design. And I just decided, hey, this is something I wanted to do. I love the smell of um, a shark match uh, and pumping gas in your car. And so I was like, one day, and crawfish boil, that's just something for me growing up as a kid. It was just like, these are my nostalgic scents. And nostalgia plays so much into scents and to labels. I do have the benefit of being somewhat of a graphic artist. Doesn't mean that I want to do that. And I think that bringing someone on is so important. If I could go back and do a lot of things differently, I would have had help sooner uh, because it's very hard once you're into it, as I'm sure that you know, uh, to teach someone who thinks that they want to pour a candle, uh, then you're losing more time because like, oh, no, no, like you don't want to be over their shoulder mumming it out, but like you just want to like grab them a little bit and like how many times, how many times do I stir this? And like, all that. So <laughs> uh, it's so trial. It makes me so anxiety. But when they get it, they get it. But I have had some horror stories, all walks of life. And um, as far as like the wicking, the labeling, the, you know, the in between, the temperature, and just it things that never occurred to me because I'd been doing it so long. I started in like my kitchen in my backyard than a shed building that I bought and um it's the temperature of the room as you were saying and the climate control and then I moved into a building that was in a actual office and there's an air conditioned vent and it's blowing right on so I'm sharing this office with four or five other people 
and one's hitting the AC and my candles were tunneling and uh, mushrooming for the first time. And I was like, wait, I didn't do anything differently. Does not compute. I'm not understanding this. And it took me a minute and um, yeah, there's resolve for that, but all these things come into play. And I think that's just your climate, like you mentioned, is everything. And people just don't understand like until you're in it. And then they're asking and they're maybe doing it in the kitchen and then they may be moving it to the bedroom or the spare room or outside. And so that's something, a factor that I see asked a lot and that I think we could definitely address together. I love that you mentioned that. Mm. It's so interesting speaking to different candle makers and hearing their their stories and their struggles when they're making candles, whether they're new or experienced, and they are searching for this perfect candle, this perfect result. And there are so many reasons why that's unattainable, but it shouldn't necessarily be something that we strive for. Yes, make the best candle that you can, and yes, make it as safe as possible. That's That goes without saying. But this level of seeking perfectionism and tying our self-worth into the result of the candle is just a dangerous combination. Yes, 100%. Like it should, candle making should be therapeutic. It should be, and I know that it's not always because I'd be a hypocrite if I said that it was, but when I'm in my rhythm and everything's like the right way, quote unquote, it's of course better. And if I'm making it, even when I'm making an order for 20 candles, 40 candles, 50 candles, and it's the same scent, it's the same concentration, it's the same, there could be someone opening the door and, you know, a few of them on the end get a little bubble here and there. And that's okay. It's no one needs to, and can I just say it for the back of the room, no one needs to be heating their jars chill with that it's okay (laughs) who are like what I don't know where that came from (laughs) and I'm sorry for laughing but like oh my gosh like that's so uh, I can't I can't even with that no don't do that it's I I know that there's somebody out there that was doing that because that worked for them and they're doing what we're doing and they're brainstorming. They're trying to remedy why, why is this happening? Maybe they were just like the North facing wind or something, but don't do that. And also with the whole, the temperature of the wax, I know, and I hope that most, like I started with a double boiler on my stove, um, then a hot plate, same thing. And um, even if I use a microwave, I just have one of those thermometers, the laser, but even if you're using that, it's like, there's no rhyme or reason. Candles are like people in a, in an odd way made up of cells. And it's just, if you're using blends, even if you're getting the same, the flakes, the pellets, the chunks, at the end of the day, it's just, things are going to happen. And it's a candle and sometimes I'll get perfect tops and I'm like, dang, she got it. She still got it, girl. And <laughs> I've been doing it for <laughs> four years and I'm like, sometimes I'll be like, why? I don't get it. And I'll be like, oh, and I'll just take my stick and poke the AC and I'm like, oh yeah. I had the door open that day because my dogs were going out or I was loading a lot of stuff or The AC kicked on and I usually keep it at a certain temperature, but someone else is in here and um, they're Mm. painting just whatever it has to be. True. And I think when we, when we relax into just enjoying the process, that's when we have better success rather than having so much pressure and so much tension put on these tiny little candles and our self-worth has nothing to do with the results. We are worthy because we are, and we wanted to, to go down this creative venture because it it brings us joy. And when we can create something that brings us joy, when the end customer receives that product, there's energy infused into that, that helps, you know, that helps all the good vibes flow. Yes. I mean, you're spot on with that. And you just put it in such an eloquent way. Um, I wish I had that again, that, that you have, but it's, if we could put your voice into a candle, that would be amazing. Like, let's do that. 
<laughs> like, let's do that. I think that you've inspired me. And that's what makes me inspired. It's just certain things. Like I do a lot of custom scents with, I smell things, a lot of spices people want to do or like weddings. And they'll send me, for instance, like, oh, they were married here. This was their cake. Da, 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 da. And I can just channel that in. And it takes me a good seven to 10 days at least for the turnaround. But it's an hour. I just do it by the hour. And I've gotten great results on that. I know that that's a completely like micro niche, but it's something that I enjoy doing because when I get that result, it's like, of course, we all want that pat on the back, right? But it's you doing it because the same reason that I do design, I might do a, um, a home or a space that it's not my style. I wouldn't put in my home, but to to hit that target and to make sure like those smooth tops, it's the same thing. Like we're all, we all want success, hopefully. And we all want to please our customer. But if you're going on there, just saying, searching what's selling you're never going to breach that because that's just I, honestly customers can tell or potential mm-hmm. customer they can just tell what it's made with love if you will same with food i think it just goes across the board and even back to you like they i know that you love what you do and i've complimented you on this and when we were chatting too, I just, I don't have to speak to everyone. You don't have to speak to everyone, but I think that we find each other in such a actually natural place. And that's a niche because we're out here just doing because we love it and we want to explore and expand on that. So if that could be the takeaway from anyone listening I think that is something to be said. You can connect with someone making vessels, for instance, and then someone who's really good at blending scents. Maybe that person has that gift. I'm not trying to, I can have a vision for, ooh, this would be a great, I can pump out ideas all day, right? And then um, never get anything done. But there's work, just like there's someone for data entry and there's someone for, some people love the computer and some people love like being behind the tools and somebody loves doing this. I personally, the wax on my hands after so long, I used to find it like, Hmm, like a paraffin, but now it's kind of like, Oh, like just get it off scrubbing the brush. Like, but at, at times like popping out the melt, it was soothing. So there's someone for that. So maybe if we could all just find and collaborate even across the world like we're doing or even you know each country someone's making these vessels let's let's combine our thoughts and like let's just expand on that and put out some really great products where we're all doing one thing and just beasting it out I Mm. think that'd be amazing yes I feel like so many people when they start their business and and it's true, they have they do all the different parts, they have all the different hats, and they feel like, well, I don't want to invest in certain areas of the business because it'll either be time or money that they perhaps don't have. But when you go into a space of collaboration and community over competition and over feeling like you have to do it all, it leaves you in this beautiful space that you're creating something with the help of others and it produces a beautiful product for your customers. Absolutely. I mean, you said it so bright. So bright. It's that's all it is. And even uh, guests that you've had on your show, and just people. I never even started listening to podcasts until a year ago, and I was like, "This is my only way to feel like, like there's got to be someone out there for me." I was more of like a silent ADHD, like in my head, listening to that, maybe music sometimes, and you don't have to do everything alone. And it's, that can go with anything in life. It doesn't have to be just candles, right? So it's just, I think that if someone's out there trying to, I went to hair school. So I know that everyone's looking for their thing. Maybe your thing is color. Maybe your thing is cuts. Maybe your thing is blow drying or styling or 
you know, there's all these different levels waxing, like all this stuff, it could be all these parts. So why can't we as a candle community link up and really figure out and hone in? There was a girl doing the the concrete vessels and it's, that is something that I've been so interested in, but it's like, how does the label fit? How does like all these things, if someone can be the one-stop shop, oh yeah, that's amazing. But Mm -hmm. we can't all run a podcast. We can't all like edit and graphic design and pour and hire people and do all these things. So, I mean, if we could figure out a way to keep doing what we're doing form this community, then I think that we could do it a lot faster because the whole, the whole thing with like everyone having the same problems and asking the same questions, maybe they're just getting the same answers, but not everyone learns in the same way. So I think that the best thing to do would be, even if you're on the screen in a place like this, that's not done yet. um, And there's a table here as it, as it's called then you're answering questions and it's a Q and a, and that's what people seem to want. And then some girls here doing this and some guys doing this and like, then all the, it's all answered for everybody. Mm. And it, it's not always about the hands-on, but it's just it, not everything's for everyone. That, mm. that makes sense. Like, yes. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think that we all have different skills and abilities. So to think that we need to be, excellent at marketing and making the candles and designing the labels and buying the supplies and doing all the things and wearing all the hats, it becomes so overwhelming and we put that pressure on ourselves and then we wonder why we want to just escape into social media or escape into watching Netflix or give up on our dreams because that's easier than continuing to follow your path and listen to your butterflies and just keep going. Yes, I mean, you said it, you nailed it. It takes the fun out of living. It's like if it if people want to live on the beach and then they go there every day. And then they're like, oh, the sand, oh, the sunburn, but there's no sunscreen or I'm like it's just it can it can be so minute. But yes, it's when you feel like these these people are reaching out, they're doing this because they're they want to do something, but they don't have an outlet for what they want to do. So do I specifically want to uh, hand make candles every day? No, I would rather be making the glass, like, you know, the, the crushed glass jars, the vessels. I'd rather be doing my design stuff. Do I love making candles when I'm making them? Absolutely. And so scheduling the time and allotting that. But when you're scaling your business, it's hard because it's like, okay, now everyone wants this. And then you feel trapped. So then you don't have that knowledge. So I think, again, what you're doing is great because to be able to outsource that or to be able to just connect with others who are just doing it and even just having an outlet right now to talk to you is great because it changes everything. Like it makes me feel like, oh, maybe I could get up and make 20 more, you know? (laughs) And it's quite late where you are, so... (laughs) Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a night owl girl. I'm in here like wicking is my worst nightmare. I don't know why. I'd rather fill it than wick it. Why? I do not know, but I digress. And then packing it, I use recycled, uh, like the newspaper, so the hands. So it's like I have to do this in segments. And then the feel on my hands with my allergy and like, you know, the lotion. Like I have my process as we all do and should. So it's just, um, I will make candles all day, all night. But when I am get in here, I'll have them all set up. 20 orders, 10 orders, 5 orders. Don't matter. Ready to go for Etsy. And I'm just like, I'll do anything else. Anything else. And I had hired somebody during the holidays to pack. And I just found myself just going at lightning speed. And that's when I realized, okay, yeah, that's that's better. If only my dogs had arms, right? (laughs) When you start your candle business, there are so many things to consider and research along the way, especially when it comes to choosing the right suppliers. 
Long Story Short provides all your design and printing needs from your logo and branding to designing and printing your product labels. The quality is exceptional, the customer service is amazing, and prices are very reasonable. They are the only label company I recommend, so check out their website or send them an email today to get started. Hello at longstoryshortdesign.com.au So I'd love to know, what are your goals for your business? Where do you see yourself in the future? So this is the, as far as the, I want to incorporate the design and candle business as one, but different. And I think that I've accomplished that because as far as staging and every magazine, every Better Homes and Gardens, you know, like all the things that you could ever uh, attribute that to or try to staging wise, there's always a candle on every photo. And there's the picture with the subway tile in the back. And like, you can get that and like all the things, the sprigs and the, I digress. But I think that where I'm going now into my next level, third year, my five-year plan, I want to have this community built to be able to franchise it, hopefully around the world. Cough, Australia, cough, maybe. (laughs) But uh, sustainable design is so... um, We're living in... I mean, like I said, we're in the South. Uh, When I moved back from New York, I was thinking, we're so behind. Yuck. Like... You know, I was in the mid twenties. Uber was just coming out here, so it was just like instead of being negative Nancy about it, I thought, hmm, I can use our laissez le bon temps, like roulet, let the good times roll to my advantage, and our laziness attitude behind chill and creole. You know, like we can use that to really pick up the slack, save some money. And I was into flipping homes and um, just kind of going that way. And I think that I can still make that happen here with the candle workshops. And that's really, I want to give people the experience they seem to want outside of bars and restaurants, something else to do. I did a a painting company here for a while, just assisted with when they were on the come up where you could just BYOB, bring your own booze, um, corking fee, and then you can just, anyone can come in here, any maker, and they pay the fee and they use the space to teach and teach, connect, grow. I really want to be able to give not just women, but anybody like, hey, do you want your, your eyebrows done down here? Do you want a conference room? Do you need to just have a podcast? Do you need to have a phone call? have your kids study? Do you want to do, you know, attend something? Do you want to teach sewing? Anything like that. Like I want the possibilities to be endless, but at the same time, you know, a lot, I, I go with the luxury term, but maybe that's not the best term for everybody. But for me, as far as the candles, the ingredients and the concepts and the services that I offer design wise, I think that, um, Luxury is the best way now, but I'm still working it out with the the whole table concept. But yeah, this community is really where I'm trying to go with it. And teaching life skills, any skills, talking to you, it's amazing. (laughs) Thank you. It's so good to know that you've got goals for the future. When I speak to other candle makers, they are so vague in what they want to achieve in their life. They sort of They don't have a particular point that they're aiming for. And I feel like when you do have that clarity and you know what you want to achieve, you get there so much faster because you've got direction and you've got focus. Whereas if it's a bit more vague, it's a bit harder to reach that goal because you don't actually know what you're aiming for. A hundred percent. And I've been guilty of that too. I just, it's focus. You said it. It's just it's so easy to get distracted and especially with candles because there's so many scents, there's so many molds, there's so many colors. I knew myself a little bit better in the beginning and I've had every, I call them the good idea fairies. So they come in like, you know what you should, I had it today. Investors and it's like, you know what you should do? Fortune cookie candles. Oh, should I? 
okay <laughs> what about fire <laughs> you know like think think but um it's I'm like wow you're gonna pay for that lawsuit I don't <laughs> Everyone has a great idea. It's so grand. And even with coloring, I cannot stress enough. Just don't do it to yourself in the beginning. I mean, if you're bored and like you have, you want to do some limited edition or you just want to do color or, you know, the the very beautiful wax melts and um, all the replica candles and very artistic, price yourself into that because that is going to take you so much time. And mm-hmm. color is expensive and it, it's not like food coloring, right? It's it, the dilution, the color of your wax. It's, oh, it's, it's a nightmare, absolute nightmare. And it can be gorgeous, but you're never, there's a reason why you don't see it all the time. It's such a different, you have to use a gel. Like some people will be like, oh my gosh, ah, because I have a king cake candle and that's like our traditional like Mardi Gras. Um, there's a little king cake baby at the bottom. And that is the only candle that I do that's um, got something in it. But the king cake baby is like a little plastic um, non-flammable baby. It's baked into every king cake or put into it. It's very heat resistant, but should not be eaten. And we have to put that on there, you know, the label at the bottom, very important for everything, anything. First thing that I ever got as far as candles, besides the wick and the wax and the, the scent, the fragrance oil, of course. But um, yeah, you just need to just stick to the basics and figure that out. Going into all this, it's not going to look the same after it's set. And people don't realize that. And then you're just going to be spending so much time. If you got nothing but time and you want to make that your niche, by all means, do that. And call me because like, I would love some, I would love to just send a picture of something and be like, can you do this? And here's the formula and here's the scent. We already got that figured out. Let's do that. But it's all when you're adding the fragrance oil and the mold and figuring out how it pops out the mold, my darn nightmare. So I think that, um, yeah, if that's going to be your thing, master your craft first. And then you can get, if you want to do color, just get color jars. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's a lot easier than trying to mix the color into the wax because it affects the yes. burn, it affects the fragrance, it affects the wick. It's 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 not just add a couple of drops and you have a colorful candle, just like it's not yeah. add wax and wick, uh, fragrance oil together and you have a perfect candle. Like there's so much more involved and as you say master the essentials first master the basics get comfortable with learning the math and the science and the chemistry behind making a basic candle and then expand from there rather than yeah. go through all of those uh idea fairies and thinking yes. I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do everything at all at once because you just end up overwhelming yourself and then you take no action and then you get nowhere with a with a baby uh, pee poo colored <laughs> like a diaper call it uh, candle and then you're like oh now I have to buy this jar to accommodate for this nasty looking wax because I'm not wasting anything and then it's just like mm, it's a mess it's a whole mess so absolutely like just yes master your craft if you're going to small very small like the the medicine cups that come on top of you know like the half ounce little half shot glass type thing anything I don't know where across the world or any state like anything that you can think of that would be a glass vessel use that and just do a little little bit of testing so that way and write down everything I do it by like for for me, it was like, okay, I have the milliliters, right? Sometimes when you squeeze it, it's not always that same way. So I just do it by drops when I'm practicing or trying something new. And I set across the board, these are my training days. These are my practicing days. So like my chunk of hours, I call it, it could be my fun day. And if I need to move it, I can slot it over. But that, because you can get into the rabbit hole on that, right? It's like, mm-hmm. oh, all these new, experiment with your sense in such a way that it's everything can add up to something else. So it's like two drops of this and four drops of that. 
they're selling it to you as, um, for instance, vetiver. And that could be like, oh, geranium, is that rose? It can smell the same and you can give that same essence. But you, if you play with it, you're like, oh, I didn't even realize like, oh, that smells like wedding cake. I didn't need to buy a new four ounce or one ounce of wedding cake. I could just go ahead and do that instead of having it sit on my shelf. So upcycling to the utmost, like the highest power. Uh, Mm -hmm. just figuring out working with what you got. That's how I got to, you know, figuring it out, breaking down the science of it and the math. It's, uh, seems nerdy, but you get it. (laughs) Yes, I get it. And the listeners get it as well. (laughs) So tell me what gives you motivation to keep going when things get tough? Um, people like you, for instance, um, the, I guess the bigger picture and the, the bigger picture, I guess for me, I do practice meditation every day I wake up and I we all have the alarm go off or like you know the hit snooze I try not to be the hit snooze person but I am and um the look at the phone I'm like oh. we all have things going on in our personal lives and just some the gratitude journal every single day you'll be in it today and you were <laughs> before like and I'm not even I don't have like I'm not trying to butter you up, but like just people like you that are out there really mean the world to me. Um, Doesn't matter if you are across the world, but it's just knowing that there is somebody out there doing what we're trying to do. And I don't think that I'm not out here trying to like hmm, make a candle and make it big. And like, I see my name on lights and like, these are the candles and all the stuff. It's just the motivation. Burnout is real as you've covered. And I think that that is something that people don't talk enough about. And it is so draining. It's depression at the end of the day. So when you just feel like there's nothing to reach in wherever you got to reach into, meditation can be so misconstrued as so many things. So it could be therapy. It could be stretching. I stretch every two, three hours, just like, you know, nothing crazy, not off the walls in here. I wish I could be, but it's wording. It's just like a candle label. It's the way that you're selling it, marketing, sell it to yourself that way. What do you need to hear? What do you, what do you need to, I make spritzes for myself, just something uplifting, a blend that I like with rose water. I spritz myself every couple hours, especially when you're making candles, you get so waxy. Is that, I don't know the word, but <laughs> I set my candle days, my making days, because I was just feeling like it was just affecting all of it. And yeah, I think that just finding a community, honestly, and that's so vague to say, but I would have never found, I mean, I was struggling from so much burnout when I found your podcast and I would have never found the way to reach out to you had you, like, I just, I felt so inclined, you know, and Mm. that's just, that's something that you can't bottle, that you can't sell. It's just you. And it's, I feel, I hope to feel the same way with my design business. That's what my clients have told me. I always try to address the elephant in the room to combine looks and styles and dress, you know, for their space and what they really need instead of selling them what I want. But they're contacting me for a reason, but also I'm letting them get what they're paying for at the end of the day, for Mm -hmm. lack of a better word. So I think that that's just what drives me. And if I can put my recycled glass on the shelves, or my candle that I know I put my blood, sweat, and tears into, not quite literally, but you know, somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it, it just adds that little finishing chef's kiss touch to it. And even if it wasn't that, I would I was considering reaching out to a candle maker locally instead of like putting the the cookies and the the cupcakes from wherever, I always would reach out to local bakers and makers because at the reveal, you know, for a house or something or an open house, 
it's just all I'm obsessed with networking and community because why? Why not like just do that? So when did answer for your question? <laughs> but it's true when you can find a community of people that understand who you are, what your mission is, and they are on their mission as well. And you surround yourself with like-minded people. You can get energy from each other. You can get inspired by each other. You can create something together that would never have existed had you not found that community or looked for that community. And I think it's so important to focus on how you can add value to other people rather than what can I get from other people. Yes, that's exactly what it's all about. Like I I knew early on that I wanted to be around other like-minded people and just working in the bar environment and building up staff that got along so well. I had to hire a staff of 17 people in two weeks at one point during football season, which is like, you know, huge here. Sports, yay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, It was just, I couldn't have cared less, but it's money. So that was very, that's imperative. And um, I just, I had my my whole, just the, I felt like I was very good at reading people and just had been doing it for so long that I knew who would work and who wouldn't. And I wasn't always right. That's not what it's about. But I had people that I'm still in touch with to this day, um, 10 years later. And they're just like, no, it wasn't the same after you left. Cause when I had to go my separate ways and go towards like the passion for design, where I had to go back to like the little fish in the big pond and working under contractors and basic builder grade stuff. It was just like, it was hard for me, but it was also getting hard for me to do the same thing over and over. Like I felt like my time was up in the service industry. And I think that's why the workshops and the candle classes appeal to me so much because it is so great to build that community and to have that skill because a lot of people don't have that. And I know that is one of my gifts, but it's not, I don't want to be on every night, like Broadway, you know? So I just, I love, I just loved that like family network. I would love to build a staff of, you know, there's a woodworker, there's this guy, there's this girl, like there's the paint, like everyone who can just like that time is money. Like I can never, ever, ever say it enough. It's the greatest currency that we have and most valuable. And when I have to go to a job site, it's the same as having to be over someone's shoulder making a scent. Like you're putting, if I'm saying put this pattern or this specific tile or flooring or whatever, what have you, it's the same exact thing for me as make sure this wick is straight. You'd be, you probably wouldn't be surprised, but it's, (laughs) hilarious I keep one candle where the wick is like this all the way to the side and I keep it as a reminder because I'm like wow I never you know you never thought you'd have to teach that but here we were Mm -hmm. and I walked in and trusted people and 60 candles go by for a 140 candle order and I walked in the next day and 20 or so are slop wicked and then you know, 60 or so or no smell at all. And I was like, have I taught you nothing? This is embarrassing. I'm a criticism person, but I I was just like, you know, I can, it goes back to that. I can do it myself. I can do it better myself. Why did I even try? And it's so easy to beat yourself up. So Mm. it's, I had to reflect on myself and be like, well, what could I have implemented? What could I have done better? What was I doing before? Mm, okay and you know go from there and bring myself back up and the right person will come along Mm. it's about that personal growth as well as the business journey yes absolutely I just had to take a breather and know when to shut yourself off too is good Uh, a lot I used to never take days off and that was probably it was in that that personal growth journey for sure because I was trying to do it. And it's like the push, the pull, hiring from within. I don't know. I think that I was just go with your gut. That's what I could say. 
Just go mm-hmm. with your gut. Yes. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I'm sure we could talk, uh, elaborate on that in a whole episode because going with your gut, hashtag, yes. Yes, trusting your instincts and connecting in with who you are and where you're from and what you're about on the inside. That can that should dictate the decisions that you make in your life. If you're living in your own truth and in your own values and in your own alignment, yes. then the, the path through life is a lot, a lot more smooth, a lot more enjoyable. Yes, overall, it's it's everything. It's, it's gotta be full circle. I don't think that you can really do anything relationship relationships are come in many forms. Um, it's not just your business. I don't think that anyone should put themselves above or below any kind of work. I mean, I'm very hands-on. I'm sitting here on a rug that I'm smushing down to sell on the marketplace for a client. I'm painting things I should yeah, I could hire out for that, but it, I always, I just try to, it's it's the borderline or the line, the fine line between am I doing too much or what can I delegate? And that's, that's a journey because it is so hard. And when you've been burned, no candle pun intended, <laughs> when you've been burned by employers or employees or coworkers or people in the past, It's so easy to be like, well, that didn't work for me. Well, don't be, get off your high horse because that's not the way to live your life. And that's what draws me to, I feel like anyone in your wheelhouse, like your skill set, you seem so grounded. And I know that we all, we can seem and appear a certain way, but everyone needs the yang to their yang. And not everyone that works for you or with you is your best friend. And everyone says, oh, my partner is my life mate. Oh, they're my they're my best friend. And they lose sight of who they are. And I think that that goes with the business. It's if you make that your life, then you, you isolate yourself and you need to find time for things that fulfill you. And um, that is the biggest lesson that I've had to learn and paid lots of money to therapy for. So, um, and like, again, it would have never led me to you. I would have never listened to a podcast in my life. And then I started and I was like, oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Like from the troubled angsty team, like no one gets me, no one gets it. And then it's like, maybe, and then here we are. Right. (laughs) (laughs) That's beautiful. We've come to one of my favorite parts of the podcast where I ask all my guests three questions relating to candles. So number one, what is your favorite candle fragrance? Oh, a hundred billion percent is crawfish boil. Um, I don't know. I, I, and I need to, I would love to, I still need to send you um, a couple, but yeah, I, I love spicy anything like I have sriracha on everything um, <laughs> before sriracha it was hot sauce everything and like anything salty spicy yeah I love that and if it's I mean that's kind of also niche so I think that lavender eucalyptus spa day soothing calming essential oil scents is like my other go-to if I'm like lighten it and I have to smell it all day. <laughs> Anything but what I make, but that I can smell all the time. Just a, a very like a lavender eucalyptus, maybe a little black pepper, um, mm. tree, that kind of like something like an Aveda, like a clean shampoo, yeah. fresh. That sounds really nice. <laughs> Number two. So what about me? Well, I am a huge fan at the moment of citrus candles. Anything that's love- fresh, anything that's fresh and just helps the your environment feel more clean and more uh, uplifted. I knew you were a clean scent girl. Yep. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh, the next question is, what do you love about candles? Oh, well, I love that they're, if without nerding out, uh, I love that they were like one of the first lights that we had. I think that all the things with the melts and now the warmers and the lamps, candles aren't going anywhere. 
They they save us in situations. We have a lot of hurricanes here. I'm sure you've heard uh, <laughs> storms and outages and whatnot. Not that that doesn't happen everywhere. Um, I would love on to be able to give candles around the world to people that needed light, but then that comes with the butane, right? So I just love that candles light up, light up your life. There's just something calming and reflective and beautiful, romantic. Can, there's a candle for everything, you know? Mm-hmm. So that is what I love because there's for every occasion, every instance, every event, there's a candle from life to death. So I think like birthday, it's beautiful. And that's what I love about candle. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. And then the last question is, what is one piece of advice that you'd like to give to other candle makers? Hmm. One piece of advice that I'd love to give to other candle makers. Just <laughs> if it's me talking to myself four years ago, chill out. <laughs> just chill that's what I would say to me um I would say just get the kit that we all get and just perfect your craft think about why you're doing it think about the questions that you just asked me and say what is your favorite scent and make I started I knew that I wanted to make a crawfish boil candle and I set out to do that and then the beignets and coffee. Um, but I just straight up honed in on that. And I think that that is the best advice that anyone can get or give, take, but however, like just do that. If you want to make a candle and that's your passion, cool. Do that. Find your favorite candle, go to the store, get your favorite candle, and then make it better. Make it your new favorite candle. Message me and or Kirsty and have her forward it to me because you're way <laughs> better than me. But like, you know, we can, if you want to, I think that just like starting there and making one scent perfected instead of going mm, this, ooh, that, ooh, that. Don't do that. Just do one thing the best and like mm-hmm. set you free. And then we can expand on that. But I think that just, yeah, doing the best advice is just make one scent the best that you can do. Top your favorite scent. That is such good advice. Ashley, thank you so, so much for being part of the podcast today. I so appreciate your time, your wisdom, your knowledge, and just adding value to the listeners and sharing your journey and your story with us. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thanks everyone for listening today. I hope this episode added value to your candle making journey. Check out the show notes for all the links mentioned throughout today's show and please subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for listening. Have a beautiful day.